Welcome to Sunflower Public Library. Sunflower Public Library is a single branch library in the rural Southwest. 20% of the local population lives in poverty and 27% are under the age of 18. A majority of the community is white, both Hispanic, Latino, and non-Hispanic Latino, though a large percentage is also non-white Hispanic Latino, and roughly 13% is Native American. Our existing resources include desktop computers for adults and children, a self-checkout station, catalog computers, a microfilm reader, scan station, 3D printer, charging stations, early literacy room, laptop and Wi-Fi checkout, as well as virtual resources online. Our goal at Sunflower Public Library is to create a safe, fun, and welcoming area in the library for teens and young adults to hang out. So we decided that we need a media room for video games. To measure the success of our media room, we will count our circulations, checkouts, reservations of the room and its resources. If we are successful, then we should achieve 30% capacity in the first month, 45% by the second month, and 60 plus percent continually after month five. By monitoring the circulation monthly, we will be able to adjust our maximum checkout time as needed. We believe these goals are achievable based on a strong marketing strategy that will continually evolve as trends evolve within social media. As we move on to our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, it will cover a multitude of areas. For strengths, we have current strong staff support and we have available space. During the pandemic shutdown, we were able to go through a storage room and weed out collections. For our weaknesses, the media room could be noisy for other patrons. The library is currently underutilized by teens and young adults. Historically, the library does not have good marketing. We will need a grant. We do not have current funding. And with potential budget cuts due to the pandemic, that could cause an issue. Moving on to opportunities, we will ask for donations of games and supplies to continue growth of the media room. There is a local college that currently started an eSports league that we would like to partner with while also partnering with the local public schools. The Dripping Springs Community Library 2020 states that being a teen volunteer helps you to learn new skills, helping your community while creating an opportunity for college admission. With that in mind, we will look for teen volunteers for community service hours to keep costs down. Last, for threats. COVID and future pandemics will play a large role in this. Teens could have better technology at home that the library cannot keep up with, which would result in low numbers. Bullying will be very significant in this media room. Bullying could cause kids to be reluctant to try the media room out or to have them never return. Will our media room spark interest in the teens? And will the community arise issues with the games? Will they feel that they are age appropriate our persona is James Franklin. James is 17 years old and uses the pronouns he, him, his. James is white, non-Hispanic, and has two older siblings who are 24 and 30 years old. James is not strongly religious and comes from a lower income background. So at home, he has to share the internet with other family members and also he uses a phone, an iPhone, that was passed down from another family member. Currently, James is a senior in high school. He plans to attend community college after graduation to study engineering. James values his independence and self-reliance. He loves living and enjoying life. He appreciates and loves his family, friendships, and the environment. And James likes having fun, play in music, skateboarding, and play in video games. So how do James's values match up with our library's values? The first one is access, which means providing all information resources to all library users. This value matches up with James' value of enjoying life. Access to all types of technology and resources supports his desire to do what he likes to do. The second value is diversity, which means we 
value our nation's diversity and strive to reflect that diversity by providing a full spectrum of resources and services to the communities we serve. This matches up with James's value of friendship. As a member of a diverse community, he meets people of different backgrounds and playing video games encourages connection and cooperation with others. The third value is the education and lifelong learning, which promotes creation, maintenance, and enhancement of a learning society. This value matches up with James's value of independence. Independence is a process acquired through learning and growth, and playing video games enhances literacy and analytical skills, coordination, and cooperation with others. Based on our need, SWOT analysis, and persona, we have created a budget proposal for this project. We are applying for a grant of $5,000, and we are confident we can build the game room we need within that budget. To bring our game room to life, we will buy three game consoles, an Xbox One S, a PlayStation 4, and a Nintendo Switch. The consoles cost between $300 and $350. For each console, we will buy the bundle that comes with a controller. We will buy three more controllers each for the Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch. We will also buy the necessary controller accessories, including a couple of rechargeable battery packs for the Xbox controllers and the comfort grips for the Switch controllers. Controllers range from $55 to $70, and controller accessories range from $10 to $17. This brings our balance to about $3,400. We will buy three games for each console. These games cost between $30 and $50 each. Our budget also includes eight gamer headsets with mics at $25 each that plug directly into the Xbox and PlayStation controllers to reduce noise if multiple consoles are being played at once. We will also buy two monitor duplicators at $14 each to combine TVs if necessary. This would bring our balance to about $2,850. To furnish the game room, we will purchase three 55-inch smart TVs and three TV consoles with built-in TV mounting stands. The TVs cost $380 each and the TV stands are $134 each at Walmart. We will also purchase three sets of couches that sit three people each along with six gamer floor chairs. The couches are $270 each and the chairs are $35 each. This brings our budget to $290. Each console will have a dedicated TV, TV stand, couch, and two gamer chairs. We will also buy a Jackbox Party Pack bundle and download Steam on the Xbox, so patrons can enjoy party games even if they don't play console video games. We will also download some free games on the various consoles. Lastly, our budget includes a grand opening night with pizza and other refreshments. This brings the balance of our budget to $12, spending $4,988 of the $5,000 grant. We chose nine games total, three for each console to start off the game room. Eventually, we will add more games. We chose games in a variety of interests and ratings to reach the most patrons. For Xbox, we have Overwatch, rated 12+, Halo 5, rated 16+, and NBA 2021, rated E for Everyone. These are some of the top Xbox games according to Microsoft 2021. For PlayStation, we chose Assassin's Creed Valhalla rated M for Mature, Marvel's Spider-Man rated T for Teen, and Just Dance rated E for Everyone. Both PlayStation and Xbox games tend to appeal to teens and young adults, which is why we only chose one E-rated game out of three for these two consoles. Nintendo Switch has more games which appeal to younger kids and are rated E. For the Switch, we bought Super Smash Bros. rated E for everyone, Mario Kart rated E for everyone, and Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild rated E10+. We will also download several popular free games onto each of the consoles such as Fortnite, Roblox, Tetris, and Fallout Shelter. So where are we going to put everything? We had a small multi-purpose room that was not often used anymore and decided that that would be our video game space. Once the tables are moved out, there'll be plenty of space for our couches, chairs, and television. 
Since there are also windows to the outside, it will be easier for staff to keep an eye out for issues such as bullying, since over 20% of school children report being bullied according to Mayans 2015. We are also considering teenage volunteers to help run the room, as they can show others how to use the devices if necessary and to help make sure everything goes smoothly, according to Teen Volunteers 2020. Here are some photos for inspiration as to what our game room could look like. And don't worry. Research by Vitelli in 2014 shows that video games can help with cognitive development and social skills, so play on. Here we have our Gantt chart. This will show our progress and timeline in making the media room come to life. This begins with deciding our initial idea to purchasing games and ending with a grand opening pizza party. As you can see from the chart, Marketing was something we spent a lot of time on to ensure success. Feel free to take a deeper look at the details. Last but not least, we have our marketing strategy. Here you can see some mock Instagram post ideas. 25% of teens say that Instagram is their favorite social media site, according to Tanksova 2021, with TikTok being 29% of their favorite, and Snapchat being the favorite of 34%, and slightly more popular. In addition, we will run a Facebook advertisement. A vast majority of Facebook users are over 24, but the children's parents could see the ad and pass on the information from Chen 2021. We will know that our marketing is effective based on engagement statistics on social media as measured by likes, comments, and shares across the three platforms as well as attendance at the grand opening. Congrats! You have made it to the end. Please help us level up Sunflower Public Library. Thank you for your attention and let us know if you have any questions. You can find our references and images used right after this.